Hello there, I'm Jamin Hatton. This is the 17th edition of the first series of the recap. The recap is where I explain for English B students poems that appear in the CXE English Syllabus 2018 to 2023. Today we're looking at Orchids by Hazel Simmons MacDonald. Now who exactly is Hazel Simmons MacDonald? Well, I didn't get much information on her, but what I do know is that she's from the country, uh, from the island, St. Lucia, and she is an educator, she is a poet, she's a poet obviously, and she also writes short stories. Now, there's a beautiful meaning coming out of this poem here, Orchids, and we'll explore it a bit later on. But it shows us just how people undervalue things of nature, how people undervalue poems, and how people undervalue flowers, all right? So we'll get a chance to understand more about what we are talking about when we say undervalue. Or we'll examine all things or kids in this edition of the recap. Now, thank you very much for all the feedback I've been getting. I really do appreciate it. I've been listening to you, persons that ask for analyses on short stories. As soon as I'm done with this first series, I will do those short stories recap for you. All right? So keep subscribed to the channel so you can update on those postings in the future. Orchids, Hazel Simmons MacDonald. I leave this house, box pieces of the five week life I've gathered. I'll send them on to fill spaces in my future life. One thing is left, a spray of orchids someone gave, from a bouquet of one who makes a ritual of flower giving scent. The orchids have no fragrance, but purple petals draw you to look at the purple heart. I watered them once, when the blossoms were full-blown, like polished poems. I was sure they'd wilt, and I would toss them out with a five-week litter. They were stubborn. I starved them. They did not die. This morning, the bud at the stalk's tip unfurled. I think I'll pluck the full-blown blooms and press them between pages of memory. Perhaps, in their thin, dried transparency, I'll discover their peculiar poetry. Orchids is the name of the poem. The title, Orchids, what exactly are these orchids? Orchids are exquisite, elegant flowers, and they are very highly scented. Uh, for some literature, or for some places, especially uh, Greece, uh, orchids are symbols of youthfulness, uh, perfection, symbol of beauty, and it's especially uh, given to young girls to signify love, right? So with that explanation or with that knowledge, let's go into looking at the poem Orchids by Hazel Simmons MacDonald. It starts by saying, I leave this house, box pieces of five week life I've gathered. And we can start by appreciating or we can start by seeing that this poet is somewhat very private. Uh, she did not divulge much information. She started by saying, I leave this house. We don't know where she's leaving to go. We don't know why she's leaving. All of these questions are unanswered. So it leaves us, the readers, to think of or possibly surmise what is going on because she's not telling us much so we can gather so far that she's moving out and she has been where she is currently for five weeks we don't know why but we will get an understanding of why later on perhaps uh, i'll send them on so she'll send the things and if you notice she's saying i will send these box things this box of pieces of things to fill spaces in my future life. She is not sending someone, or she is not having someone fill those spaces, but she is sending materialistic things to fill the space in her future life. What is that telling us? Maybe, perhaps, she uh, just ended a relationship, and these things that she, she is sending is probably what remained as a result of the ending of the relationship. So maybe they, they shared a, a house together 
and we are just surmising here because we haven't we we don't have a lot of information to actually understand what is happening in this first stanza here so we're just having a guess of what is going on and that's what poetry is it's all about trying to put pieces together to unravel a mystery yeah? or to put the puzzle together so to fill spaces of my future life so obviously she's sending these things to her future life and we're going to try and guess that something is causing her to leave we'll try to understand why later on one thing is left a spray of orchids someone gave from a bouquet of one who makes a ritual of flower giving scent now ritual we know what ritual means it's like a custom it's like uh, always giving flowers i don't know how how much rituals you know of but personally when while growing up and it's your birthday as every person that wants to get buy you a gift they will always buy you cologne or they will always buy you perfume or something that is very steady <laughs> uh, cologne 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 every time it's the same thing so it's like they're saying here somebody for every occasion they give flowers they give a bouquet of flowers so the person had a ritual of flower giving scent but notice the poet is saying a spray of orchid they're not saying that uh, the, the the bouquet was actually given to her she's not saying the bouquet was actually given to her she's saying a spray was given to her so perhaps the bouquet was not intended for her and all she was given is one single one one single flower so that's one of the summation that we can possibly make so yeah so maybe the person the original recipient of this bouquet of flowers they decided to give her a spray or give her a few of these uh, flowers these orchids and now she's trying to get rid of them for some reason let's back up a little bit remember she said she was sending to her future life these things these box pieces of things what exactly might be put in a box when you're moving mementos probably mementos things that we want to remember things that we want to to hold as memories so perhaps these things that she's sending are important uh, but yet she's keeping back these flowers they are not going with the other things why perhaps because the flowers uh, the flowers reminded her of someone perhaps the flowers reminding her of something she doesn't want to remember all of this here can come out from that meaning there and then we have that word someone someone was not named why maybe the person who gave her that spray of orchids she doesn't want to remember them she wants to detach herself from the from that person so that is kind of an interesting statement or interesting way to put it someone who makes a, a ritual of flower giving scent I'm, I'm hinting here I'm hinting that maybe it was a lover maybe it was someone she once held dear and the relationship ended badly and now she's moving on and she wants to try and get rid of all the things that reminded her of that person all right we are still making uh, assumptions here we have not gotten the proof we need just yet right so we go on to say the orchids have no fragrance but purple petals draw you to look at the purple heart now this is very important for two reasons one orchids as we know are very highly scented flowers right so for them to for her to say they have no fragrance is beautiful hazel did a wonderful job here because what exactly is that can it mean that the poet has lost her sense of smell or does it mean that the poet failed to realize the importance or the significance of these orchids because remember if we really don't value something we would not really appreciate what it, it has as a worth 
right? So perhaps the flowers did have a scent, but because she did not value the presence of these orchids, they appear with they appear as though they had no fragrance to her. But it went on to say, but purple petals draw you to look at the purple heart. And this reinforces the point I was just making. Even though she felt as though the flowers were um, without a smell, she was somewhat drawn to them still. And why? Because the purple was a peaceful color. And now let's look at the color purple. Purple refers to and has always been associated with royalty primarily because the existence of the color purple was only affiliated with rich people. So it always uh, brought about that um, sense of wealth. All right. So and then we has that popular pun. So pun is play on words and we can see that there. The purple heart refers to the splash of color in the center of the bloom. So that's that's literal. But it says since purple speaks of bravery and we know this it highlights the bravery of the flowers that this woman is about to do unspeakable things to get rid of you but you will not die trying to show how resilient those flowers are all right one point i want you to note is that in the army in the army, a purple heart is given to a, a soldier that exhibits a great sense of bravery. And for us to refer to those flowers, those orchids, as purple petals and purple heart, we're playing on words because we're putting the meaning of that bravery that is in the army to those flowers. Okay? So I repeat what I just talked about a little bit there. Purple petals draw you to the purple heart. The purple heart is the proof that I would need when I say uh, maybe a romantic relationship went sour and as a result she's moving house. All right. So we move on now to say I watered them once when the blossoms were full blown like polished poems. Are we going to talk about the fact that you don't really water orchids like you would water normal plants. So the fact that she was watering them showed us that she was trying to kill them. So with, at this point here we are seeing some amount of harm being done literally to aspects of nature. And with that said we can compare this poem to the poem God's Grandeur by Manly Hopkins. And that tells us just how we can be cruel to nature we can be cruel to things that are different to us uh, likewise here we're seeing that this person and this poet is really uh, dislikes poems so much that did oh let me repeat that we can see here that the poet here dislikes these flowers so much that she wants to kill them it might be as a result of what they remind her of, but it can also tell us that she was not appreciative of them because she's not knowledgeable or she is not uh, she does not appreciate them because to her they lack significance or to her their beauty is not known. You know, to be honest, uh, when we don't appreciate something, we can never seem to understand its beauty. And that's what's going on here. Uh, but it goes on to give us a little person, give us a little simile, as well as a, an alliteration. So let's look at that a little bit, and then we'll try, try and clear up whatever misconceptions you might have right now. Don't pause the video. I will try and clear that up you'll get to understand exactly what i'm saying here it says when the blossoms were full blown like polished flowers polished let's think about the floor we're polishing a floor polish tells us how much work go into how much work goes into producing a product so if we are doing something like writing 
and it's his poems. So this is hinting to us that maybe she was a poet, maybe she was a writer, and here she was for five weeks working on her latest piece. And that is what I want you to take away from this poem. She was working on her latest piece. As a result, she separated herself from civilization for about five weeks. All right. So for time upon time, she was working on her drafts. And finally, there was a complete something complete, a uh, good product, a good poem. So it was polished poems. So she's comparing the blossoms of these orchids to polished poems. What is that telling us? It's saying that even though she was trying to harm these orchids, they appear to be a final product. Even though she was trying to harm these orchids, they appear to be perfect. They appear to be beautiful. And that's where the comparison with Gerald Manley Hopkins come in. It shows that despite man's inability to appreciate aspects of nature, there is nature still has a way of redeeming it itself. Nature still has a way of redefining itself. Nature still has a way of refreshing itself. And that is what is being compared here. It goes on to talk about, I was sure they'd wilt. So she was expecting them to die after she tried to do all of that. So she was convinced that what she has done is enough to kill these flowers but she was surprised she said she was hoping to toss them out with a five week litter before she moved house but she goes on to say they were stubborn i starved them they did not die so she was cognizant of what she was doing she wanted to harm these flowers she wanted to kill them but they were not going to die they did not die they were resilient so it's as though no matter how hard she tries the flowers were reluctant to die and that shows the, the, the aspect of nature that we must admire even though we are harming nature nature still has its way of redeeming itself re refreshing itself time after time even though we are trying to harm it goes on to say this morning the bud at the stark tip unfurled and that is just beautiful writing it shows that she was doing all of this to harm these flowers but these flowers here unfurled and to tell us what that she was trying to kill them and instead of dying they had new life new vigor new hope beautiful huh? wonderful wonderful poetry i think i'll pluck the full-blown blooms and what's i saying pluck i think i think i'll pluck she wasn't sure what she was going to do with them. She wasn't sure what she wanted to do with them. But she thinks she will plug the balloon. So she probably, at this point, and we see, we are seeing a change here. She realized that, you know what? These flowers are not going to die. They're not going to die the way I want them to die. So I'm going to plug them. And when I plug them, I'll try and admire them. And press them between pages of memory. Probably in a book. So she's moving now and, and coming back to the fact that she was a writer, you see pages of memory, pages. Yes, memory is there, but pages, what is she, why is she putting them in pages? Because that is the work she was doing. She was putting these flowers in the pages to remind her of what she had written. Perhaps in their thin, dried transparency, you know, your dry flowers, uh, uh, she'll discover their peculiar poetry. So she's saying that maybe there is more to these flowers. There is more f that I can admire from them. There is more I can understand from them. And maybe when they're dried, maybe when I, I have succeeded in killing them, I'll try and understand the beauty of them. And that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> that's very ridiculous. It says that we can only appreciate the beauty of something when we no longer have it. What exactly is Hazel trying to tell us? She's telling us that maybe we have something in front of us and we don't appreciate the beauty of it. But when it's dead, when it's dried up, then we might seem to discover the peculiar beauty of that thing 
interesting writing. Very, very beautiful writing. So we are recapping. Recapping, we can compare this poem under the themes death, nature, survival, dreams, desire. A good poem to compare this with is God's Grandeur by Gerald Manley Hopkins. You can check that out. I'll leave a, I'll leave a link in the description there if you haven't looked at that already. So how can we sum up this poem? We can sum it up by saying that there is an indomitable spirit of nature and ultimately, well, flowers, ultimately nature, that resist the harm that it is dealt by man. What am I saying? I'm saying that nature has a way of renewing itself. Nature has a way of blossoming. Nature has a way of unfurling when it's dealt something bad. As a result, we have something beautiful like an orchid. We can also take this poem to mean this. We can say that this woman here was trying to stifle an innate gift, the gift to create literature, the gift to create poetry, but like the orchids, her ability to create art will blossom. So she did create a beautiful poem here, even though she didn't want to create that poem, even though she was trying to stifle the gift of being able to create literature by suppressing that talent, by, by trying to kill that talent, by secluding herself, she did ultimately create that talent. She did ultimately succumb to the, the will of literature and create a beautiful poem. If you don't understand that, go ahead and just interpret it to mean the first one I talked about, indomitable spirit of flowers and ultimately nature to resist the harm dealt to it by man. If you understand that, good job. Don't worry with the next part of it. Maybe the pieces of the things that she was actually sending to her future life, maybe it was actually work that she composed while she was actually sojourned in that house for five weeks. So I'm adding to the point I was making there just now. She was trying to stifle the talent she had, the innate talent she had, but she was unable to do so and just like these flowers or just like the, the orchids, she was a failure in the sense that she had to produce this wonderful poetry and when she produced this poetry she shipped them off to fill spaces in her future life that was a poem orchids by gerald hmm, no 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 that was orchids by hazel mcdonald thank you very much for listening love to hear from you i love to hear from you go ahead and give me a comment tell me what you think of the review tell me what you like tell me what you don't like tell me what you agree with what you disagree with that's what literature is about that's what literature that's what makes literature fun all right go ahead and like this though subscribe so you can get updates and future postings goodbye